Hello children, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this video, we will learn about drawing pictures for Math Olympiad Geometry. If you are solving problems for Mathematical Olympiads for quite some time, then you know that drawing a good picture, an accurate picture, is often extremely important to solve a geometry problem. The problem is this, that you cannot do it using tools like GeoGebra or other computational tools in the Mathematical Olympiads. You can only use a pen or a pencil, a ruler, compass, that's all. So, in this video, I will show you how we can draw quite good pictures, effective pictures for geometry problems using a method called the grid method without even using a ruler. If you use a ruler, the pictures will be even better. But you don't even have to use a ruler if you want to do it. So, uh, if you are a student of Chinta, you may have seen this before in our Math Olympiad programs or our uh, ISI CMI entrance programs. You can check the link in the description for more details related to that. But let's understand this particular method using a problem from the International Math Olympiad 2024. This is IMO 2024. I will not be solving this problem in this video. I will just use this problem to show you how I can draw an accurate picture that can give us so much information about the problem just using a pen and paper that's all okay all right so let's see how we can do this so i'll call this the grid method the grid method so this problem says that abc be a triangle with ab less than ac less than bc so it's a scalene triangle with a certain side length given a certain order of side lengths given this is the first sort of the challenge how can you draw that because whenever you try to draw a picture of a triangle you are almost like a, it's a, almost like an equilateral or an isosceles triangle our eye estimation is like that so let's do it using the grid method first step of the grid method is actually to draw a grid so i will draw it like this so here is a line By eye estimation, I can almost make these gaps equal. That's the trick. If you want to make slanted lines, and if you want to make the gaps equal, that's actually harder. But if you want to make vertical lines or horizontal lines, and if you want to make the gaps equal, that is much more doable. There's something about the human mind that handles straightness better than slantedness or curvedness. So let's see. So we have these vertical lines and these horizontal lines, which is like a grid, of course. Of course, if you have a marked ruler, if you have a marked ruler, then this will be even better. So this is this is the grid. And I want to draw a scalene triangle. Moreover, I want AB less than AC less than BC. So let's let's see how we can do that. Let's pick a point. Let's suppose this point and let's call it A. And then let's put B here. So this is AB. Clearly, AB, the length of AB is square root of 1 square plus 2 square, which is square root of 5. This is Pythagoras theorem. Let's put AC here. Let's put AC here. This is AB. This is AC. This is square root of 2 square plus 2 square, which is square root of 8. And finally, we have BC here. 
which is just nine, just three. So BC is three, which is square root of nine. So clearly, we have established that condition that AB is less than. So in this picture, AB is less than AC is less than BC, and the estimation is pretty good because we just use horizontal lines and vertical lines to draw this ABC. Okay, and we use Pythagoras theorem. So we are using geometry to draw a diagram of geometry. We will use more of that as let's see how this works. So it says let the in center and in circle let the in center and in circle of triangle ABC be I and omega. So we want to draw the in center. Now see this is again a bit of I estimation and it will not take help of the grid lines directly, not right away, but you will see in a moment that we will make use of that. So this is the angle bisectors are pretty accurate if you want to draw it by eye estimations. Like this. So the two angle bisectors meet at the in center and now it's very easy to draw the in radius because you can just drop a perpendicular from here. And the perpendicular will be parallel to the grid line. So no problem. So I will just make the circle. Which is the. In in south of this triangle. No problem. All in using I estimations, all using, not using compass or pencil either, just pen and paper. Okay, next, we have drawn the in center, we have drawn the in circle. So it's like the, these are the in, red, in radius, in radius, in radius, right? Now, what does it say? It says that X be the point on the line BC different from C such that the line through X is parallel to AC is tangent to omega. So, basically, it's asking us to draw a tangent to the circle omega. It has to be parallel to AC. Parallel to AC. No problem, parallel lines are easy to draw using I estimation. So let's do it. So this is a parallel line. Parallel to AC. Parallel to AC. So this is parallel to AC. And this point is X. And this is parallel to AB. And this point has to be Y. So, parallel to AB. And this point is Y. Okay. Finally, we also have to mark the midpoints K and L of AC and AB. Thanks to the grid lines, we can do that very quickly. The midpoint of AC will just be the point where it cuts through the middle. So this is the uh, this is the diagonal of this square. So the mid midpoint is right here. No problem. This is a midpoint, and this is another midpoint. Wherever AB cuts through the midline, this reference line, that is the midpoint of AB. These are properties of rectangles that you can use. So we are again using the grid line to actually accurately pinpoint the midpoint. Obviously, none of this is really accurate. But for the purpose of just drawing a picture to solve a problem, these are pretty good. So the midpoint of AC is K. This is K and this is L, I think, yes. 
we also have to draw the circum circle of ABC circum circle of ABC which is not very hard we can draw the circum circle Okay, again, you can see how the grid line can be used to actually, you know, draw the circum circle pretty accurately. And we have to extend AI. We have to extend AI to meet the circum circle at the point P. So this is the point P. So we have the circum circle, we have the in circle. And we have all of these things put in one place, which is perfect. So what do we have to show? We have to show that KIL, this is I in center, KIL, KIL, this point is I, plus YPX. Y, P, X. So, this angle plus this angle is 180 degree. That's the challenge. That's what we have to show. So, we will not go into solving this problem. But I will show you how this entire, you know, business of drawing the grid lines helped us to actually draw a pretty accurate picture and make some conjectures. So, let me just erase the grid lines now. Because they were just references. We don't need them for the actual picture. This is the actual picture. Now you can immediately make certain conjectures which are pretty awesome. Because now that the picture is kind of accurate, you can make one conjecture which is actually pretty easily provable. May not be directly related to the actual proof, the final proof that we want to show that y p x plus k i l is 180. This is the final goal. But there, there are certain conjectures related to the picture that you can immediately make just by looking at the diagram because the diagram is so good now. For example, if I join this point, let's say this point is j. And this point is H. The two points where the tangent lines meet the two sides. What happens if I connect JI? Just by looking at the picture, you see, let's con and let's join HI as well. Just by looking at the picture, you can sort of see that this is a right angle. And since you see it, since your eyes see it, now you can set out to prove it. This is just a conjecture right now. You have not proven it. So, here is a conjecture. Conjecture. That angle AIJ is a 90 degree. In, the, in fact, angle AIH is also 90 degree. Is this true? It looks like that from the picture. So can you prove or disprove this conjecture just by looking at this picture and by doing some angle chasing? The point is that if you draw an accurate picture, then you can see many things from the diagram which you can then set out to prove and those small proofs can together make up the big proof. But first, your diagram should be as accurate as possible so that you can actually see and make those conjectures. Making conjectures, making educated guesses are the first step of solving interesting geometry problems. And if you draw this obviously using, a, using GeoGebra or something else, then um, certainly that would give you much more information, but that would also feel like cheating. Because those patterns would then appear because some calculations are happening by the computer 
and then therefore it's drawing the picture so accurately and giving up those intrinsic properties of the diagram. There is also a bit of philosophical angle to what we have just done. We have used framing, framing, horizontal and vertical lines. It's like a frame in which we actually drew the picture. So those were reference lines. So those reference lines are not directly involved in the actual diagram. This is the actual diagram. You don't see reference lines anywhere. But the reference lines were nevertheless very important, very useful to draw the actual diagram. The, this is a very important principle in mathematics in general. Often what you do is you see a very scattered, very chaotic system of things in a very systematic reference frame. And once you put it there, it, be, it the, the more patterns emerge. So I would say that the final line, the slogan should be, whenever you see chaos, whenever you see curviness, try to approximate it with linear references. This is a, this is a very, very deep slogan that runs through all of mathematics is true in calculus, is true in algebra. I mean, it appears weirdly in different parts of mathematics. Maybe at one point we can talk about it. It's a lot of fun. So, uh, if you see non-linearness to make sense of non-linearity, I try to frame it in a linear reference, maybe you will get some more information. That's the slogan. Okay. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. Keep on doing great mathematics. Check the link in the description if you want to join our community for to get mentored to attend the Olympiad programs, the research programs, the leadership oriented entrepreneurial programs. We are having a lot of fun. I wish you can also join us. All right. Take care. Bye. I'll see you in the next one.